Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the triangle inequality. There are a few ways to formulate the triangle inequality and in particular we're going to be working with the real numbers, not the complex numbers. And we're not only going to be talking about a couple of variables, but we're going to be talking about the most general form of the triangle inequality for real numbers that is involving the absolute value. There are a few other ways in which we can formulate it, but this is the version that we're going to look at. So let's start with the most base case, and that's going to form the base case of our induction argument. What it says is that for all x and y in the real numbers, it's true that the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x plus y. And we want to prove this. We're going to be working backwards. So whatever steps we show, you're going to have to go upwards to formally prove it. But we're going to be going downwards. Okay, so the first observation is that here both sides are greater than or equal to zero. That allows us to square both sides because in that case the squaring step is reversible. We want to make sure that all of our steps are reversible since we're going backwards and we get the square of the absolute value of x plus the square of the absolute value of y plus 2 abs x abs y greater than or equal to x square plus y square plus 2xy. We can get rid of these absolute values since squaring something is the same as squaring its negative. So the absolute value is not really necessary. We get the same result either way, which is this. This is x square plus y square plus 2 times absolute value of xy greater than or equal to x square plus y square plus 2xy. Now we can apply some cancellations. The x squares, the y squares, and the 2's. And we get the absolute value of xy is greater than or equal to xy. And this is definitely true because the absolute value of something is always greater than or equal to that thing itself. Now comes the equality case. We can see that equality holds if and only if at the absolute value of xy is equal to xy and that's true if and only if xy is greater than or equal to zero you should be able to independently verify that step. And that is true if and only if two th one of two things is true. x is greater than or equal to zero and y is greater than or equal to zero. Or x is less than or equal to zero and y is less than or equal to zero. So we have two cases here. And as long as one of them is true, equality holds in the triangle inequality. That is this inequality over here. So that takes care of it for two variables, but we want to state the inequality for n variables as well as this equality case. Before we do that, I just want to mention what this equality condition means geometrically. So geometrically what it means is that we have the number line and there is zero right in the middle and what we do is that we split the number line into two halves each half including zero going this way and going to the left. And what, what, what we're seeing is that x and y are, are either both on the right side or x and y are both on the left side. And that's going to be the general idea behind the equality case of the general triangle inequality as well. 
So let's prove it. The, the general triangle inequality says for all x1, x2, all the way through to xn in the real numbers, it's true that the absolute value of x1 plus the absolute value of x2 all the way through to the absolute value of xn is greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. Sorry, the absolute value of the sum. So over here we have the sum of the absolute values and over here we have the absolute value of the sum. And we're saying that we can always compare them in the same way. So we're going to be using induction. Hopefully you've seen that method before. If not, you sh should be able to pick up on how it works through this proof. The base case is done, which is for n equals to 2. We just proved it. And what we're going to do is that we're going to show that if case n minus 1 holds for some n minus 1 greater than or equal to 2, then case n holds. So it's going to fall like a domino effect. 2 is going to lead to 3, 3 is going to lead to 4, 4 is going to lead to 5, so on to infinity. That's the power of induction, that by taking care of the base case and the inductive step and using the induction hypothesis, which is this, we can prove it for all, all infinity, um, and, but, well, countable infinity. So let's see if we can prove this through induction and in the process figure out the equality case. So we're going to, we're, we're assuming that, we're assuming that x1 absolute value plus x2 absolute value all the way through to xn minus 1 absolute value is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x1 plus x2 all the way through to xn minus 1 with equality if and only if x1 comma x2 all the way through to xn are all non-negative or x1 x2 all the way through to xn minus 1 not n are all non-positive and what we want to prove is the same thing but with n variables. So let's take this and add the absolute value of xn to both sides. So we get x1 all the way through to xn minus 1 plus xn is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x1 all the way through to x minus 1 plus the absolute value of xn. And over here, we can just use the base case. We're going to pretend like this over here is a block variable. I'll call it y if you want. And so this is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x1 all the way through to xn minus 1 plus xn, which is the inequality that we wanted to prove. Now, we should formally take care of the equality case. So we're going to be taking care of this case first, and then this case. So suppose x1 all the way through to xn minus 1 are greater than or equal to 0. Well, 
that means that x1 plus all the way through to xn minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. And because of the base case over here that we used, we know that the sign of this sum, whether it's non-negative or non-positive, is the same as the sign, well, it's not exactly the sign because 0 is a sign of it by itself, but what I mean is that xn is also greater than or equal to 0. So we can tack it on to our list over here. Similarly, suppose x1 all the way through to xn minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. Well, that implies that the sum of x1 all the way through to xn minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. And because xn also has to lie on the same side of the real numbers, we get that xn is less than or equal to 0 because it's on the same side as this sum. So that means we can tack it on to our list over here. So either way, we have the real number line here with 0 in the middle. And we have the two sides, both including 0. And what we're saying is that we either have all the x's on one side, or we have all the x's on the other side. OK, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.